Welcome to the 274th edition of Legal Empowerment Through Interaction Lecture Series. Uh, we have been discussing about different facets of law. We have been uh, uh, addressing issues. And as lawyers, we have been uh, uh, pleading or uh, acting for and on behalf of uh, others. Now today, let us have an introspection. Let us know whether we know our own rights, whether we know what our duties, obligations, or um, are we being, uh, um, uh, if uh, I don't want to take any words out of the mouth of uh, just uh, uh, Sriram, sir. So I'm sure that we'll have the introductory address uh, by him. So rights, duties, and privileges under the Advocates Act 1961. And Bar Council of India rules is the topic. And uh, we are privileged with this wonderful speaker. Uh, Sri Hari Kumar, sir, is an advocate of the High Court of Kerala. And to introduce the subject, we have the Advocate General of Andhra Pradesh, uh, Sri Sri Ramsar, and to render the concluding remarks, we have Nagaraj Narayan, who is a managing trustee, Bar Council of Kerala Trust and Member Disciplinary Committee. We are today privileged with the presence of Justice Ramkumar sir, Justice Ramakrishnan sir, Justice Pius Kuriyako sir, and all of you, wonderful participants who have been uh, inspiring, uh, sharing thoughts, ideas, and uh, every evening, once we uh, end, end, uh, at the end of the session, we go back empowered, enlightened, or with some strange, uh, 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 we are aware that uh, certain things we have been holding dear to us, uh, certain concepts, things may get dislodged, unlearned, relearn, and again, we'll do the learning process. Every day we act as a student. That is the beauty of this platform. And I'm sure that today also we'll have the same, uh, uh, I'd say, experience we did have when we did try to learn something in our school days. So, Iram, sir, the stage is all for the introductory remarks. Uh, thank you, Sham. Uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, honorable judges, past and present, practicing lawyers and the fraternity. Uh, I was uh, party to a conversation, though I was muted for some time, and I heard Mr. Hari Kumar speak about a particular litigation uh, concerning one lawyer, Mr. Wilson, and I saw the pain in his voice when he said that was an invited verdict. And uh, certain unwarranted remarks were drawn into the litigation, and obviously it was not a plain uh, litigation, is what I could about I could understand from the topic. Now, who than the veteran of the bar to really speak about the rights, duties, and the privileges of the advocate, especially uh, when we hear of Mr. Hari Kumar, which I heard from uh, colleagues from Kerala, is one of those old school whose the uh, the epitome of uh, the conscientiousness of lawyers and uh, who always stuck to being only one side of the brief. Uh, when I speak of this, and uh, this happened in my presence in Supreme Court a couple of decades ago when the irrepressible Mr. Ramjit Milani, while appearing in one of the courts, had found that a colleague who was representing the state in the very same matter had moved on to the petitioner side. And then uh, when uh, Justice Pasayat had wondered as to why Mr. Ramjat Malani had to be left alone in the midst of a brief, uh, Ram goes, what do I do, my lord? The other side was so talented that he couldn't resist the temptation of being on both sides. So this is uh, the predicament that all of us youngsters used to face at that point in time, because uh, we would see certain examples set a few precedents set in terms of amazing and unimpeachable behavior. And at the same time, uh, we saw a few departures as well. In a profession where uh, most of us uh, do not draw from the same background or are not as endowed as the rest of us are, uh, the economics of the month and the day determines the choices of the briefs we take up and also the choices we give up. So for the sheer number of opportunities that the profession offers us, where silence at occasion is more remunerative than our articulation, we need to know as to where to stay, where the line is, and how necessary it is for the lawyer to stay away from the line of the do's and don'ts. The rights, the duties, and the privileges are those that we try to protect off the citizens who happen to be our clients, but the duty we owe to ourselves, to the court, to the other side, to the brief, and the courtesies we hold to everyone 
are those matters which don't get embellished enough, which don't get spoken enough. And I think it's in the fitness of uh, the things of continuous learning that Lettles has uh, taken upon itself that a topic that is not uh, very uh, regularly spoken of is now uh, sought to be put on the table and a very esteemed colleague of the bar, a very highly respected and a distinguished member of the Kerala bar is to address us. Let us hear in rapt attention and again rededicate ourselves to what are the values of the profession. Over to Mr. Hari Kumar. Hari Kumar, sir. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Shri Ram, sir, thank you very much. And uh, may I request uh, Hari Kumar, sir, to address us on the topic. First, let me thank the Advocate General of Andhra Pradesh, who was so kind enough to shower so good words on me. Further, he has given in brief what exactly I meant <laughs> <laughs> that I am obliged on that score, sir. Up to you. Let me begin the subject, sir, with your permission oh, yeah. and with the permission of all the revered judges, seniors, my colleagues in the bar, and I am thankful to this a platform being provided to me by Mr. Shyam Bhatman as well by Mr. Prem. Because otherwise I would not have received an opportunity to see all these persons, especially the erudite group. Now, shall I begin saying that the word advocate must start with its genealogy. Many among us sitting here may be knowing it, but I may resound it. That is advocatus. See, advocatus is a Latin word which means to plead for someone else or so, to plead for some cause. Let it be a general cause. Let it be an individual cause. You are not pleading on your own cause. You are pleading for someone else's cause. So it is from that the word comes advocatus. Likewise, in French also, our kid is there. So the plural of advocate, advocate it is advocate, is advocati. And further, just I am giving saying that the first advocate, if I am asked, who is the first advocate? Under the pristine Hindu culture, I may say, I bow before Bhagavad Gita. Because all, all the rights, duties, and privileges were taught to Arjuna by Bhagavan Sri Krishna. Same way, in the Old Testament, if you go through the book of Esther, you find the wife of the Persian king pleading as against the genealogy that might have taken place as planned by the minister Haman. It was only on, on account of her timely intervention and pleading that that was sabotaged. So going by history, these are two instances wherein we can easily say the pristine advocacy. Now, now I may say, to be a good lawyer, you need not be a good lawyer to be an advocate. To be a good lawyer and to be an advocate are entirely different. Because advocate is a person as defined under 2A or the Advocates Act. Whereas lawyer is not defined anywhere in the Advocates Act. 
legal practitioner is defined under 2e now only in 1961 when the advocates act came it begins with the preamble that this act shall come into force not like that it begins with a preamble each section in this act shall come into force on being notified and we were not having the right to practice enshrined under section 30 till 2011 so nobody was bothered rather everybody went to other states they were filing vakalas judges were accepting it without any hesitation as per law only a lawyer who who was enrolled in the state bar council rolls could file a vakalat in the concerned state if he has to appear somewhere else he can file a vakalat only with a person enrolled in the state bar council of that particular state that was the position prior to being section 30 being notified no nobody ever bothered but there were two cases before the supreme court for seeking direction to the executive to say that this should be notified the the apex court with due respect i will say did not touch it apex court said we are not entering into the arena of the executive duties <clears throat> and at this time i i must mention about the judges case also wherein everything was fixed for themselves see this is said only with due respect i know learned judges are there and uh, this is what i said everybody as ramakrishnan sir told everybody thinks about his own rights his own privileges as said they don't think about the duties now anyway section being 30 being notified now we have got a right of practice now i will come to the qualities that a lawyer that an advocate must have in order to be a good advocate one mastery over professional etiquette that is what i must say as a primary point accepting that many successful lawyers i stand corrected as advocates have that quality that is only thing lacking is what he said as etiquettes then he must have professional skills especially learning of law if he has learning of law he can be addressed as a lawyer otherwise he can only be called as advocate this is essentially the difference between advocate and lawyer many people say i am a lawyer i wonder at many when they introduce themselves as a lawyer now second is analyzing what exactly is the need of the client who approaches you and in order to understand that you must be proficient in the subject of physiognomy i think all the participants know what exactly the subject of physio physiognomy is the subject of physiognomy is assessing a person from his appearance features and talks 
So when a person approaches you by his appearance, by his talks, you must understand what exactly he is. Is no, that voice? That voice has gone. No, being still. When he visited. There is some interruption, connectivity issue. To be a good lawyer, you must know the subject of physiognomy. This was the first piece of advice that I received when I went and met Mrs. Patrick to join her firm at Bombay. And then he explains what exactly physiognomy is. So that is a subject that is required to be learned. Then, or otherwise, you will be deceived by hearing the, the needs of the client. Many look only at the needs of the client. They don't think whether it is an essential need whether it is essentially to be filed for redressal of the grievances or is it taking you for a ride to, for purposes known best to him. See, this is essentially to be known by a lawyer before he takes the brief. So after he he takes the brief. He must have not after he takes brief, I stand corrected. Before he takes his brief, as a good advocate or as a good lawyer, he must have the drafting skills. Then the next is analyzing the law on the subject in connection with the various subjects, the statutes that may fall into in the, in the cause that he is going to project for his client. Many of us are mainly taken by precedents without even looking into what the statute is and without analyzing what exactly the statute is by oneself. So many will say, I have heard many senior lawyers saying, it's covered by so and so. They may say some citation. So whether it applies exactly to his case, that he does not look. And he gives advice also. It is easily covered by so and so president. So I may say, to be a good advocate, you must essentially be in a position to analyze the statute by yourself. After finding out which all statutes apply, which all provisions of that, that statute apply to your cause to be projected. Then mastery in English as well as mastery in the vernacular language in the area in which he is practicing. So for example, he must be proficient in Malayalam language if he is to be an advocate of the state of Kerala. But for Malayalam itself, there are various dialects For Sri Ramsar's knowledge, I am using a local term. See, Ten Vadal is a term used only in Thiruvananthavaran district. It means south to north. In no other part of Kerala, this is seen. Then I will say Sri Pandaravaga. That also is prevalent only 
Sri Pandaravaga is different from Pandaravaga. Pandaravaga means belonging to the government. Because Pandaram in Malayalam, especially in Travancore area, in those days means the government. See, and Sri Pandaram is none other than Sri Padmanabha. So Sri Banda, Bandaravaga means property that belongs to Sri Padmanabha. Even though Martha and Varma, after becoming the Maharaja and conquering almost all areas, after constituting the throne, what do you call as the kingdom of Travancore? He submitted his sword before Padmanabha and chose himself to be his dasa. Dasa means servant. And he was taking only the bare minimum that is required for his subsistence, the royal family, unlike the Maharajas in many other parts. That is how all this treasury was there, now revealed in Bhatmanabha Swami Temple. They could have easily taken it during the state's reorganization time. Just as the Nawab of Hyderabad. Here, the Maharaja said, I don't want anything. So the local customs are to be known. The, that also is a must, just like the language. So you must be a master in the customary practices of the cause for which your client has approached you. So when you are lacking all these, you essentially is not doing anything for your client. You may win the case. I see, I'm very sorry to say that now a days, especially at least for the last two, three decades, submissiveness wins the case. <laughs> and at least Ram Kumar sir and Justice Pais Kuryakos, because I had opportunity, and Ramoshan sir also, they can certify that I do not belong to that category of submissiveness even when I was young. Because when I went to the bar, when I joined the Trivandrum bar, there were big, big doyens in the subject, like P.S. and Kukilia, who was the son of the one and only directly elevated Chief Justice of Travangu. I do not know in many, in, whether in any other high court, there is a directly elevated Chief Justice. To my knowledge, he is the only person who has been elevated directly as a Chief Justice. Then there was P. Ramakrishnavulla, the, the with whom Justice Sotatil B. Ramakrishnan joined as a junior to start with his practice. Later on, only in 1980, he used to store the practice to High Court of Kerala when Justice Patmanavanna joined as a district judge with Mr. P. Sumar and I, sir. So why I was telling is I got the benefit of having a follower of all these people. Then I may say G.P. Mohanendran then I may say Poochal Sarashivan Nair, sir. Kottur Gobalakrishnavulla. And the wonderful thing is, all these people died almost in Peru. <clears throat> See, they had very rich heritage. When they joined the bar, they were having a very rich atmosphere. And after having sufficient files, after having sufficient number of clients. And I remember another man also, that is Subaram sir, 
who is the senior of, in fact, many. And Mr. G. S. Rena sir once told me, do you know whose case I argued for the first time? Sir, I don't know. I know you only as her to be the, the junior of Shankar Ayer, sir. No, no, Shankar Ayer, sir, was my senior. And it, it was he who gave me all this. But the very first case that was given to me for argument was by Subbara. Subbara was an advocate at the Trivandrum Bar with a postgraduate degree in English and ML in the subject concerned. Then what has happened is I even now can say only with tears that this old respected man on becoming blind was going through the streets, Brahmin streets in Valyashala. And he was before, he, he, he was in a way, I had to arrest my scooter, that is best. Not stopping my scooter, I had to arrest my scooter in which I was traveling to save him. So I put my scooter on the uh, to, uh, on the stand and then I went and bowed before him. Because he was blind, he could not. Then I said, Subaram sir, I am a, an advocate of the Trivandrum bar. Oh, you know me. Can you give me 10 rupees? See, I can only say it with tears, sir. Because in the days in which I came to the bar, the entire Chalai Bazaar clientele was with him. He did not know how to take fees from them. He, he was only given two rupees and a, and a lunch from IRR. IRR means Indian Railway Restaurant. That was all what is required. And some pan superi. This is all what was required for him. And his fate was this. Same way, GP Mohanendra sir also. He was having wonderful knowledge in all the statutes concerned. And he was respected much by Chetur Shankaranaya, Justice Chetur Shankaranaya, when he, he was going to the CAT, Central Administrative Tribunal. He used to make clarifications with Mr. G. P. Mohanendra, sir. And at a time when I was the secretary of the Bar Association, he approached me with a need to make a recommendation for cessation of practice. Because in order to draw the welfare fund, he must first apply for cessation of practice. Sir, why you are asking all this? Only thing is, I want that three lakhs. So it is not your proficiency in the and your skill in the subject that makes you moneyed, that makes you rich. What makes you rich is something else. That was not expected to be explained in detail by that, only because of the context in which I mentioned I said all this, I may be excused for that much. Then, as said, the, under the pristine, sorry, under the canonical law, the adversarial system started as early as in the 17th century for canonization. Canonization, I think the participants know. If a, if a person is to be declared as holy, then that process is called canonization. So under for canonization, there are two types of lawyers. 
see both appointed by the Church. papacy one is advocatus de dia that is advocatus dia and the that is the person who argues in favor of canonization and we have the devil's advocate ah the other one is devil's advocate and for that also there is a term in latin sir that is advocatus diaboli <laughs> we may usually read it as diaboli i had the diabolical of, i had the privilege of being a, an advocate for the syrian catholic community from 1985 onwards so and i had the privilege of studying in their school which was a school established by vatican i think that is the one and only school which is established by vatican directly pope pius 11 high school parnica see in my times there were only one division in each class for the english school and for the malayalam school there were many divisions so there were two schools we were all in the same so there were very proficient persons who had, who had much of learning in latin it is from them that i had my fascination for latin bona fide when many most of us say like that it is not bona fide it is bona fide suppose i address before a court like that i'm sure <laughs> with much listen interruption is he aware is he aware of the interruption sham uh, is he aware of the interruption i think there is some interruption sir one second so uh, you like to you like to better inform him uh hari kumar sir you like to unmute somehow you got yes sir some interruption happened yes, yes. bona so, fide sir pardon sir interruption bona fide sir ah <laughs> interruption bona fide exactly sir because at least the learned community may have to <laughs> address like that sir it is not and, and understand that it is not bona fide and mala fide it is bona fide and mala fide in latin commonly used words that is why i said then essentially a person is enrolled under section 24 that is the qualifications for enrollment as an advocate is coming under section 24 of the advocates act so he must be a citizen of india and that's why foreign advocates have not been able to get themselves here though there are many calls and i expect that that may happen within a short time because we are we are all in the move of globalization so he must be a citizen of india then there is a further explanation explanation a national of any other country if citizens of india duly qualified are permitted to practice law in the other country see then he has completed 21 years of age see this is some significance because i relate it to the age restriction that was imposed by the bar council fixing 45 as the age at that time senior advocate mr gova gobar nair was the bar council of india chairman with whom i have close association i said govind jatan this will be struck down by supreme court for the simple reason 
that you have to have it statutorily fixed, not by rules, but by the act. Because minimum wage, when fixed by the act, the maximum also can be fixed by the act. And it is not within your rule making power. That was what exactly happened in that case also. So when it happened like that, after some time, he called me, Harry, you are a good Kanya. Kanya means an astrologer. Sri Ram sir may not be knowing. <laughs> See what I meant is <laughs> Kanyan is a local usage or Ganayan is a local usage for astrologer. So then he has obtained a degree in law. Many explanations are required to be discussed in that context. There was an introduction by way of a restriction, limiting it to professional course. As Tam Kumar sir started saying in the beginning, there was a canvas case obtaining a decision that a part-time course also is good LLB. And an evening course also is a good LLB. And anybody can opt to be a lawyer. That was an invited judgment. I know fully well. Without looking into the seriousness, some sort of mercy shown to the applicant. But that has sabotaged the whole cause. Even now, that professional course, essentially, it must be a professional course remains only under Kartar. And that essential lacking is reflected in the profession as such. Then he is, he is, to, he is entitled to be enrolled as an advocate under any rule by the Bar Council of India in this behalf. That is actually now infructuous. Because as I said, when the age restriction 45 was imposed by rules, that was struck down by the apex court. So this continues. Though continuing, it has become infructuous. Then he is entitled to be enrolled as an advocate and run, so then maybe admitted as an advocate on a state road if he makes an application for such enrollment in accordance with the provisions of the Act, fulfills the conditions specified in clauses A to F. Then comes the classification of advocates. This also is very important. Section 16 says, there shall be two classes of advocates. Advocates and senior advocates. I don't want to make any controversy in this but I may be excused in mentioning particularly because an advocate is an advocate on the state roads. After being on the state roads, under 16.2, one can be designated as a senior advocate. And that designation is by the apex court or by the high court concern. I mean, the concern means can the high court, any high court can make a person designated senior by virtue of his learning, etc., etc. That was the practice. Now by application and voting. I'm not entering into that controversy. So if you are, you are to be designated, you will have to go obtain two-third votes other, behind all barriers and you have to go after all the judges uh, and obtain two-thirds because may, I have even heard from some judges. I actually did not know him. But since he approached me, <laughs> I have also voted for him. <laughs> anyway, to be very frank, I have never tried to be and I don't want to be. See, in this context, I may say, whether a senior advocate 
can claim privileged communication. Ram Kumar sir knows much about privileged communication because he is an expert in evidence at CRPC, IPC. Because I have attended to many classes without his knowledge. <laughs> and I accept him. I bow before him as to his learning. Even when he was an additional district judge in Trivandra. Now, I had the first occasion to see him only at that time in 1998. So whether 124 privilege is there, it can be claimed by a senior advocate. In my humble words, it cannot be. Because he no longer is expected to have any sort of communication with his client. See, that is the duty that he must think about. As Ram Kumar said and uh, as Ramashan sir said, <laughs> that will be kept apart. He cannot meet a client. See, it is only the instructing counsel who, who can meet the client. Disabilities are more. Disabilities are more, but no, but everybody keeps the disabilities ignored. Here, and I don't want to mention, recently there was a controversy in which it was so said that I was I am having privileged communication so that the police cannot do anything. And then there was a statement by the Bar Council president saying that if a complaint comes before us, we will look into the matter. I'm sorry, sir, to the Bar Council president, State Bar Council president, that you cannot, because unless his robes as a senior designate is a designated lawyer is removed, you cannot. That's why they are exempted from having the certificate of practice when it was so introduced. Sir knows, Sri Ram sir knows all this. And I think because he being, a, I'm sorry, sir, being a designated senior, senior. I'm sorry, sir, for mentioning all these things. If no, I no, sir, truth is a defense for all truths. So you please go <laughs> ahead. I'm enjoying it. So, so I must say sorry before the Bar Council president who enrolls the advocates and who has to teach what exactly the rights, duties, and privileges that he would initiate disciplinary proceedings as against a senior lawyer if a complaint before comes before him. Sorry, sir, you cannot because unless the robes are removed by the person, by the body which has conferred him with them, that designation. There is, a, there is a case in which I don't want to mention the name of that esteemed senior in Supreme Court. The apex court removed the robes. So once robes are removed, the State Bar Council can proceed against. And then, see, a senior, designated senior is not expected to draft the pleadings. He is not expected to shape the evidence. Here, as said earlier, these burdens are kept out of arena when things are done. Because unless those are kept outside, you would. And many a uh, designated senior happens to be too submissive than even the ordinary lawyer. See, you can be courteous, you must be courteous. But being too much submissive for the cause means for the client's cause. Because essentially every advocate must know that he is not a spokesperson for the advocate, for the client. He is an officer of the court, actually intended 
to enlighten the court on the facts and the law relating to the subject and then to plead for the cause of his client. I'm very sorry that nowadays I find only one in thousand, not even hundred, see, behaving like that. I remember Sri Ram sir's acknowledgement towards me, though he had no personal opportunity to meet me. All the judges sitting here had that opportunity, experiencing what I profess and what I preach. It, whether it is different from what I am doing. If there is no case for the, ad, for the client, the advocate must be in a position to say before the court that I don't have a case. Then why did you file it? I remember the late Kannandana who was asked such a question by a revered judge of our high court. Then Gandhanam sir said, my client asked me, I put the very same question to him. My client then asked me, who are you to decide? Let his lordship decide. And those words brought in an admission and interim state. I was a witness to that. So <laughs> that is a tactics. That's a tactics, true. So, he, he, see, he was acknowledging that the client is actually not having a good case. And then when the judge was asking him, why did you file it? He was simply saying, the clients asked me, who are you to decide? Let their lords decide it. So that is how he got an order. So that is a tactful method. It's a skill. No doubt. He has not gone anywhere wrong. He has not gone anywhere wrong. See, this is what I said. It, there is nothing wrong. I have great reverence to him for what he has done in that manner. Then the next one I have to mention is see, advocates to be the only class I mean the recognized class entitled to practice of law as enshrined under section 29 of the advocates. Then section 30 is the right to practice, which was notified only on 15-6-2011. And there was Nobody thinking about your right of practice that, till such time also. Though as a secretary of the Bar Association, I had made repeated representations, including to Baba. Sri Arkal Narayan, sir, who was then an MB. Then he said, I have raised a question in the parliament. And they asked me to meet the minister. I met the minister also. It will, something will be done. That was in 98, 99. And uh, ultimately that happened in 2011 on 15, 6, thank God for having taken place after 50 years of introduction of the statute. 1961 to 2011. So third, then what 30 confers you is subject to the restrictions. You are entitled to practice in all the courts, including the Supreme Court of India. There, my learned friends may ask me, can we practice? You can practice, but with regard to filing and other things, you have to be an advocate on record, without which that is, exceptions are there to the rules. Somebody filed a repetition also that was dismissed, saying that it cannot be. <laughs> then, by Section 30, before any tribunal or a person legally authorized to take evidence, 
that from the introduction of the consumer protection act in some interruption audio yeah. fine <clears throat> can i continue mr chair yes, yes 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 so it requires uh, to mention that the methodology of our legislation got a change from the consumer protect introduction of the consumer protection act that is switching over from anglo saxon methods to american jurisprudence so from that day onwards <coughs> it so started that every see everything is controlled by that jurisprudence in the sense that the first line that i see in many statutes advocates are not entitled to appear despite section 30 also suppose you go before some authority wherein there is such a thing in by legislation and i will have to mention specifically that among the legislators <laughs> at least 30% are advocates and it is they who draft all this sorry they who pass it or put it as a legislation without even going through what exactly it is it is the legal drafting is one done essentially by the legal assistant to the section officer to the legislature secretary finished then it is introduced as a bill that is all all discussions debates everything is there but nothing actually takes place the role of the lawyer as when india became independent because the lawyers then were the persons who were so leading now we cut a poor figure because we are kept out from the from almost all premium arenas we are kept out now even in court the court staff consider you as a second rate person though by statute you are an advocate i may have to mention that in a particular court this is only occasionally is mentioned i may be excused if it is out of the subject see one day just prior to the closing of the court a particular case was heard before justice so and so and when the case was heard the judge asked the petitioners counsel are you withdrawing it or am i to impose heavy cost then he sought a day's time the judge ordered the case to be posted day next day next it is nowhere in the list i asked the court officer i requested the court officer madam why it's not seen in the list sir there are many cases like that you can you may please enquire in the list since as all the judges sitting here know me at 10:15 when the judge came i stood up and then he was kind enough to ask me whether you have any submission because he, that particular judge is a judge who gives much importance to right of pre audience because among the person standing by my gray hair or by something like that he, he knew that at least i am senior among the persons standing there for making mention then i said this is what happened with within few words madam court officer was kind enough so he told me you need not wait because being closing day you can proceed to trivandra after finishing of your other works in the court if there is any other work in this court uh, you can also mention that at 145 it will be taken up and that will be disposed and the other counsel was also there because i had informed him earlier <laughs> that i will be mentioning it so that counsel said he is not pressing the matter 
So at 145, it was coming as specialist and that was disposed. Then the funny thing happens. It was dismissed as withdrawn. That is the art, detailed order of the jet. Then in the site, what is written is allowed. What am I to see? When my client asked me what has happened, I told him this is what happened. In the evening, he frantically calls me. Sir, have you gone to the site? As to the disposal history, the order is not there, sir. It is written as allowed. So this is the sort of, see if you make an inquiry with the registry, go to health is the internal attitude. So your privileges end there. You can make submissions to the court, but not to the court masters. I do not know whether in Andhra Pradesh, same thing is there, sir. Oh, they, here, we here. call them, uh, while we call uh, the judges only your lordships, I call the bench masters, the honorable bench masters, the very honorific <laughs> bench masters, because I know that it, I know the slip between the cup and the lip that you just spoke about. That was why, sir, I addressed Madam Court Officer. See, see, this is the, the other part of lacking privileges. Essentially, when you claim that you are an officer of the court, I may say, you are not even getting the privilege of a class 4 employee there. Despite my vow decades of practice. But I do not usually approach them for anything. If I have to get anything rarely, and if they go against, I have no hesitation to mention it before the judge. Whatever way the particular respected judge takes it. <coughs> now, then comes the 31, the special provision for attorneys. And uh, nobody may be remembering that it is repealed. It is repealed, sir. It's repealed with effect from 1-1-1977. So how it constitutionally continues as attorney general, that is yet to be constitutionally it continue, continues as attorney general, sir. Then same way, solicitor general also is there. It's not constitutional. It's only by the rules. Constitu article 76 is the article attracting the appointment of attorney general and solicitor general is not a thing coming under the constitution. It comes only under the law officer's terms of appointment. Then, so what I meant to say is, sir, please. I'm meeting Mr. Tushar Mehta now. Do you advise me to tell him that he's holding a post unconstitutionally? <laughs> Not, you cannot say so, sir. In my humble words, you cannot say so, sir. But you being bold can say you are not occupying a constitutional post. As, <laughs> so in, the case of, you be. as in the case of additional advocate general. Yes, sir. As in the case of additional advocate general. So solicitor general, assistant solicitor general, etc. Additional solicitor general, etc. Now, now they are deputy solicitor general. They are now rechristened. I <laughs> hear senior government, senior earlier uh, in Kerala, it was senior central standing Correct. council. No, that now was, still, still it continues. No, no. Here in Kerala, it is redesignated some decade back, one decade back. And yeah, they are called as assistant solicitor general at AP. Also, only two days ago, they were redesignated as deputy solicitor general. Oh. Ah, so one step more. Here it is still continuing as assistant, sir. But we have Actually. state attorney. Yes, state, state <laughs> attorney is there. Earlier, mm. to Ram Kumar, sir, I need not say. Earlier, the what they call as the liaison officer. 
redesignation has now made it as state attorney. When attorney itself is not coming under Advocates Act. There are no other classes as I told. Under the Advocates Act, there is only one class that is advocate and advocate alone. There is no solicitor, it's a misnomer. There is no attorney, that is a misnomer. And furthermore, under the rules, and if you go by the etymology of the term solicitor, it goes against the rules also. <laughs> Because what under the rule, that is some of India may, rules. May, may I interfere to say? Yes, other sir. Prosecutors. Prosecutors, prosecutors are coming. CRPC. 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 Section 24. It's not there in the Advocates Act. Prosecutor is not there in the Advocates Act. Need not be. That, hmm. that is not a misnomer. It is not a misnomer. No, no, no. What Nagaraj want to say is, Advocate General was also not there in the uh, Advocates Act. No, Advocate no. General need not be. Advocate no, is there. No. So, when the uh, Constitution provides for appointment of certain persons for certain posts as a constitutional post, I don't think there is no bar that the uh, Act and the rules will prevail over that. I only said, sir, it is a misnomer. And I was trying to say further the misnomer that soliciting, if you go by the term, etymology of the term, soliciting. Yes. So, it, one who Something. solicits is called a solicitor. Yes. And right. under Rule 36 of the... It was prohibited. Under Rule 36 of the Bar Council of India rules, governing the etiquettes, you are not entitled to Sorry. advertise. You are not entitled to make your name known and published. By even by means of discussions other than in legal forum. Now, all of us know what happens during 8 p.m. in all the channels. You come across constitutional experts, criminal <laughs> experts, civil experts, <laughs> and many other experts. Uh, and uh, I can say easily before Ramarshan sir that there are what do you call as see uh, experts of nature, etc. I, I see, I'm very frank, I'm not insulting anybody. But persons who go before such forum should know that they are outside the purview of section 36, doing something outside the purview of, of rule 36, not section 36. Rule 36. That nobody thinks. No, 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 no. Probably I think they may come under the classification of providing legal awareness on certain subjects of importance. When media sir, takes it as a subject. Sir, you can, but not like this. No, maybe. I am not in the way in which... No, no, no. Say. Sir, I may, for that, I may say even there is restriction on the size of the board to be put in by an advocate. And we, an advocate or kid cannot say that he is a retired judge or that he was a tax officer. He cannot even put in as tax practitioner. All these are there. But who are to impose all these conditions? That is to be imposed and found to be followed strictly by the disciplinary authority. Unfortunately, those who are there in the disciplinary authority itself constitute a major part of all this. I'm very sorry to say that. So when I said as a misnomer, I wanted to say on the subject of soliciting. See how attorneys came. Attorneys were there in Britain. And we were essentially under British rule. So that is how when the Republic of India was constituted, Attorney General came. That term came. Now we see what it is not like prosecutor. I think that as per that provision, the, the, yes, the, the, I the, no, no, solicitor cannot, solicitor, solicitor cannot uh, argue it appears. You can only solicit and uh, 
instead yes, sir you are the advocate yeah. and no no sir in the in the in, when wherever there where see prior to independence prior to this advocates act not independence prior to this advocates act there were persons as solicitors that which you can easily recollect from chaglas book justice chaglas book roses in december he says who all were interesting cases with now we uh, are uh, loosely saying as trouts 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 essentially they were also persons like that sir because their name was solicitor firm they will collect the brief and they want another arguing counsel just like instructing counsel <laughs> see i only made a job nobody may get offended well not that that they, was the practice earlier see there was arguing counsel and as sir said there was what do you call as solicitors solicitor firms were there even now in in mumbai you can see so many boards you know that was the reason why you know when the advocate acts came for some time the pleaders were also though they are not lawyers the pleaders were also permitted to uh, continue as lawyers no by the advocates act those who had acted as such for 3 years under permissions granted by court came into the unified category of advocates sir is correct so not for some time they could continue for i don't want to mention the name but i can safely say about a late a revered pleader who has a justice in the high court retired who happened to be uh, further if i say everybody will come to know <clears throat> he was a pleader and only under the unified act he was wonderful in conduct of criminal cases no doubt and his juniors were all advocates very very big people so so proclaimed including i may say janardana group sir he has mentioned it in his autobiography so is that to continue with i may say then the other important section because this is a not a thing which can be so easily the yeah. subject rights duties or privileges that the all those are intermingled i was emphasizing more on the subject that your duties are forgotten when you say about your rights and privileges and i am finally to make a prayer that the privilege instead of going about the privileges and rights you must think essentially about your duties which is essentially lacking then with this and another session i may be able to because yes i think i will be taking continue in another session too i will be take i have already taken much of the time of the attendees who have patiently heard me and i am thankful to all the attendees revered persons my respect my respectful judges especially i am sure pais kuria ko sir was entering this platform for the first time hmm pais kuria ko sir was attending and ramesh sir also told me No, no, I was rarely attending. attending. Rarely no, no, I attending. was no, no, I was attending regularly this. But Nagaraj, I used to inter intervene sometimes when, when according to my convenience. <laughs> so, with a wholehearted thanks for the participants, let me conclude for the day. Though I have only made an inroad on a tip of the iceberg. thank you thank you very much sir uh, as far as today's session is concerned uh, may I request uh, advocate nagraj narayan to render the concluding remarks for today's session respected dignitaries on the virtual dais 
and off the virtual dais. And dear friends, brothers and sisters, now we have come across certain aspects of, of the profession. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Yes, very much. Yes. Very much. yes. From the area of the provision and the main speaker, whom I call as sometimes I call as Hari Sir, sometimes I call as Hari Man, has spoken from his heart and from his experience. Uh, but let me say he has taken us through starting from Bhagavad Gita through Bible, <laughs> various provisions of the legislation, his experience, and certain personal instances. Now, let me tell you that, let me tell all of here, that many of the uh, persons who are here are, are, most of them are learned, and their uh, knowledge on the subject will be so much precious that I would say that I may not be as competent as many of them to give the concluding remarks or speak on this area. And this area, as you know, as all of us know, is something which we can speak not for one hour or two hours, but for hours and hours. It's an area where we have so many decisions from United Kingdom, from United States and the provision there in United States is far, is having a history which cannot be parallel or which cannot be compared to our history. We have a lesser history compared to the history of the provision in United States. That is why uh, this Warren Burger who was a former Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court, once said that the long and hazardous task of constructing a provision has been in the United States has been filled with setbacks and reverses. So the provision itself had to fight its way through various setbacks and provisions to bring about a code of conduct. And this code even after uh, there is a very ethical system there, of course, the principles of advertisement and all are different from what we have here. The ethics there is different from the ethics here. And we are still in the colonial age as far as ethics are concerned. Certain areas of ethics are concerned, not all areas. But there, as been said by several, by this Warren Burger, See, the, this history is the reason why even now the lawyers there are finding it very difficult to uh, reconcile between uh, the search for their professional identity and their pursuit for economic success. So that, that competition or that uh, reconciliation between these two issues, one is the professional identity on one side, the other is economic success. How to reconcile this? Now, that is an issue here also. After I have assumed the position of member of the Bar Council, now I can say with pride that this Bar Council has taken so much of initiative to arrest certain practices. Now, at least this Bar Council has taken so many cases sumo out of whenever we have come across any, any such information where the lawyer is indulging in unfair practice, then we have taken action on our own. And uh, there have been instances where lawyers have been using the social media, not to lead advertise, to create hate, hatred among others in the society as a whole, which is creating a bad impression, not for the person who is creating that hurt, <laughs> hatred or hate, but also for the entire Provision as a whole. 
but these are all uh, we have we have taken it we have taken sumoto then the person who is taking initiative he will be attacked so in one case i have taken the initiative i was attacked <laughs> so many things came like it i was i am being targeted in the facebook i am not saying there are instances like this and one another instance what has what has been said by harimar sir is regarding that is a major issue which we are confronting which is not being addressed by the act and also by the rules the issue is a person gets enrolled in the role of a state bar counselor for example he gets enrolled in state of maharashtra or in state of bihar then he comes here and practices here now as far as the kerala state bar council is concerned we can take action only against a person who is an, is who is on the role of this bar council so a person who is there we cannot take action against him but he is continuously practicing here his regular practice is here but that is a misconduct as all of us know a part 4 part 6 part 6 of the bar council of india rules chapter 1 speaks on the restrictions on senior advocates and chapter 2 says what are the conditions the chapter 2 says what are the duties of the lawyer and chapter 3 says the conditions for right to practice so you have the right to practice under section 35 as it has been said the risk of repetition i may say that the right to practice has been implemented with effect from 15 6 2011 but the rules prescribe how this right could be exercised how this is is reasonably controlled by the rules there says that within 6 if a person continues to have a regular practice in another state if he doesn't change his name from the role of the state in which he is enrolled to the state in which he is presently practicing that is a deemed misconduct nothing more should be done so we have such persons several persons who are doing so here but we cannot take action because he is not in our role only the uh, state bar council which is in whose role it is they are there they can take but is a deemed misconduct so what we can do is only we can write to that bar council we have at least written three letters in one case nothing has happened because of the pendency so that is an anomaly or that is something a gray area where and regarding the other principles also there are a lot of gray areas in this aspect then another very important thing which i want to tell and remind all of us is that the lawyers need even senior lawyers a lot of lawyers need education on what this etiquette is now what is said is chapter 2 specifically says standards of professional conduct and etiquette etiquette so what is etiquette etiquette is it simply says polite behavior in the society how to behave politely in the society and polite behavior among members of a profession any profession or among members of a group so this polite behavior how we should be the preamble is very clear the preamble itself would explain everything of of what is expected of a lawyer an advocate shall at all times comport himself in a manner befitting his status as an officer of the court a privileged member of the community and a gentleman bearing in mind that what may be lawful and moral for a person who is not a member of the bar or for a member of the bar in this non professional capacity may still be improper for an advocate so it only says it clearly reminds all of us that in his non professional capacity it may be absolutely correct but that is even that may be moral and lawful in a non professional capacity but still as a professional it is not moral for that person so even in his professional private relations 
he has to come forth in a different manner as a gentleman. Even in the club, his private life, he says that a lawyer has to come forth himself in a manner befitting a gentleman. And it has been reminded, it has been said. See what is happening in the channel interviews. If we want to take action against all these persons, we'll have to take action against so many people. It has become, it has. So we have had a discussion once where we said, why don't we publish a guideline stating that from now on we will take action. But where to put the crux? A lot of issues are there where we don't, where we can draw the line. Where to draw the line? These issues are there. And very simple facts. Lawyers come with, uh, in cases of complaint, lawyers come with uh, defenses saying that, admitting that he has agreed, the client has agreed to pay such and such fees, being this much percentage of this, this much percentage of the award. Now the rules itself says, that cannot be done. Rule says that you cannot, the advocate cannot fix a fees based on the percentage of the benefit or on the, or the share of the fruits of the litigation. You cannot do anything of this sort. And that is not stated. An advocate shall not, the rule, uh, rule 20 of chapter uh, 2 says, an advocate shall not stipulate for a fee contingent on the results of the litigation or agree to share the proceeds thereof. So even percentage is not permissible. So whatever you say, it should be not in terms of the share of the, it should not be contingent on the result. Whether the award is given or not, you can say this is the fees. So there are defenses taken by the lawyer saying that this is what has been done. In several cases, I've seen cases where lawyers withhold briefs and says that the fees has not been paid, which is not possible. At least three Supreme Court decisions on the point. He says that you have no right to lean. The moment the client says, I don't want you, if he has not paid any fees, return back the brief, you go for a civil suit, but you cannot retain it even for a minute. Yes, Ms. Connor. But these are all admitted, saying this is at so many instances we come across wherein this is happening, which shows that education, law schools are not giving proper education for them. And the profession is also not giving proper education. And they are not learning. The lawyers, large number of lawyers are not learning even in the profession, that what are the basics of this? And of course, there are so many decisions in this area, which the time doesn't permit me to, uh, and my role is very limited, like concluding <laughs> for this. And of course, there's a very famous decision where authored by O. Chinnaparadi, Justice Chinnaparadi, where why it is called the noble profession. It is said, why it is. And a lot of instances which we, we come across. Maybe as concluding remarks, it is too much. I have already taken too much time. Maybe I may not take even a minute more. Thank you for giving me this, this opportunity. And maybe this professional ethics is one area where lawyers should be given continuing legal education, uh, continuing education again and again. And of course, maybe a word of difference with my senior friend, uh, Haryumar sir. Maybe these are uh, regarding the misnomer. Well, I have a different opinion because, of course, I am entitled to my opinion. I have a different opinion. Of course, uh, there are only two words which are specified senior advocate and advocate. But law officer, as such, government law officer is not specified, government leader is not specified, uh, advocate general, either it would be specified. These classifications all come either in the constitution or by a specific legislation. Or, or through rules made under a specific legislation. So all these are covered. Now, Advocate General comes in the Constitution, Attorney General comes in the Constitution, Solicitor General and uh, Public Prosecutor comes in the legislation, uh, Public Prosecutor comes through a legislation, Government Leader is coming through another uh, piece of 
uh, rule of law, uh, piece of rule law, then state attorney and all these are regulated by rules and classifications for administrative convenience of government law officers. And there is a government law officers rules, which has a statutory backing. And based on that, these are all given and their duties are also given as Arimar sir said. Maybe uh, earlier there was a post as liaison officer, but now the state attorney, after it has been, uh, now the state attorney is not just liaisoning office. It has given more uh, legal uh, obligations through rules. Certain important cases, which involves more than one department, will have to be taken by the state attorney or an additional advocate general. And additional advocate general, advocate generals are all, they all, the advocate general is the constitutional authority who has to divide everything based on the rules. And the rules provide for this classification, which is not impermissible so long as it has got the support of a statutory backing by legislation or the rules under the legislation. So I may say that uh, this even regarding senior advocate chapter one of part four, six, it says about all these have been said, what are the basics of, but I have come across so many uh, senior advocates, even Patros Mutai sir, you know, Maybe certain concession may be. I've engaged Patros Mutaisar for so many cases. I've engaged so many senior advocates. I've seen many of them not uh, getting directly instructions from the client, only getting instructions through me. And I've seen also judges who are very particular to see that the, the senior is there, uh, the instructing counsel is also there. And also senior advocates who are very particular say they will not stand up without the instructing counsel on the side. Fortunately, our uh, institution, our high court is good at that following the etiquette, etiquette as for the senior advocates. And of course, both senior advocates and other advocates, both of them come within the purview of the Bar Council of India because there's no separate proceedings which is which are provided for other advocates other than senior advocates. Maybe with these words, uh, I may uh, conclude, I may conclude myself with my concluding remarks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, very nice of you to be with us uh, today and uh, sharing your thoughts on this very, very important topic addressed by Hari Kumar, sir. Uh, may I request uh, uh, comments from uh, Justice Ram Kumar, sir, please. Thank you, Mr. Shyam. Mr. Hari, Hari Kumar, Advocate Hari Kumar, has beautifully sketched the evolution of the advocates to the present day advocate. We have seen the, the need to study the physiognomy of the client by the lawyer. My aunt used to make fun of me. When I told her that I was enrolled as an advocate, she used to make fun of me, saying that all lawyers are liars. Because she had a very bitter experience in her own case, in a rent control litigation. That made her uh, despise the lawyer community. <laughs> you are right. Uh, um, when you said that many stalwarts in the profession died in penury, I have seen in very many stations where I worked that some there are doyens of the bar who are ready reckoners for the ju ju relatively junior consultees, consultants uh, who consult them. They were there, there the consultee was uh, having briefless, was uh, remaining briefless and in penury. But those who consulted him, were having very lucrative practice. Unfortunately, this is the story. Uh, the, the, Mr. Nagaraj Naren has also entirely highlighted the fact that an advocate is an officer of the court 24 into 7. Throughout the, not only during the court hours, even outside, he is an, he is an officer of the court. He has to adhere to the various uh, uh, rights, obligations, etc. Very, very enlightening, uh, this thing, of course, only we'll have to treat it as part heard. We will hear Mr. Hari Kumar for, on some other uh, convenient occasion also. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ram Kumar sir. Uh, may I request uh, Ramashin sir and then uh, Ramana sir as well, please. Ramashin sir. It is very, very uh, happy to hear Hari Kumar on the subject which is now very much 
necessary for the lawyers to understand their position in the society and their role as officers of the court in protecting the cause of the client. Because normally we used to say that you are not expected to identify with the client, but you are only projecting the cause of the client. It is for the court to decide. Your duty is to place the facts and the law before the court. Truly, it is not what is what you are, what you are expected to say is that truly the facts and the this thing. Even my senior used to say when I used to say there is no case, then he used to advise me that it is your duty to inform the client that it is you are not having a good case. You should not give a false hope to the client. And thereafter, as Kanandamnan has said before the uh, court, if he says that you will have to file a case, you will have to file it because I had an occasion when my senior said I will not file the case. It went to another lawyer. And thereafter, I was sitting in the court. Then I laughed at the lawyer who presented the case, got an injunction. Then he told me that I know that why you are laughing. Because it is your senior who had refused to take the case, said you have no case, I will not file the case. I filed it and got it. I told him the same thing was Ramdas told, that you don't have a case, but we'll try our luck. So it is, a, uh, it is how the lawyers take it. Because they will have to, they have got a duty to inform the client the real position as, on, as the law then stood. Because probably you can't say that the law may change or the decision may come in, in favor of a, a, a cause which is being before the court. That may be the reason when sometimes the courts are also admitting certain cases where they have got doubt as a position on the basis of which you say that it is settled, where it, it has got some doubt on that which has to be re revisited. There are cases where the things are being happening also. But we can't say that uh, that is the reason why the law never can be static. It must be moving depending upon the change of circumstances and the change of the society. Otherwise, you will not be able to do the social justice what is what was, what was expected. Because you can't expect that every time the law, the law will be enacted for the purpose of providing the uh, justice that is required to be provided for the, uh, the public or the, uh, the people of People, uh, the the uh, people of the uh, people of the country, because you will have to find out with the existing law how the relief can be provided for them, and it is the duty of the lawyer to frame the uh, 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 pleadings in such a way that that must be with, become within the PGN holds of the law that is available, so that the relief also can be molded in that way by the court when in appropriate cases it has been properly projected. But for that you are not expected to misrepresent, you are not expected to misquote. You are not expected to, uh, what do you call, uh, the quote the uh, overruled decision and then got a decision and go back, get a favorable order and go back. That is the reason why, because even I think, I don't think that the earlier senior lawyers were appointed for the purpose of pleading the case before the court. They will only argue the case, they won't take evidence. That is what I understood when they, in the yes, well, senior lawyers, they never come to the court for the purpose of cross examining a witness, collecting evidence or collecting in a discussion with the clients for the purpose of shaping the case or the defense. They will only on the basis of the material available record, they will argue the case. That is how the senior brief is being given for the purpose of argument. But now uh, the position has changed. So that is how the things go. I, I may, uh, the uh, Sera may enlighten on that. I think that earlier senior lawyers will never appear in the lower courts for the purpose of taking evidence. They will be engaged only for the purpose of argument after the evidence is over. That is what I understood. Uh, anyhow, it's a, uh, and another thing is the Bar Association, Nagaraj was saying that he is proud of it. At the same bar, the Bar Council has passed a resolution when certain incident happened in a court to take action against the judge. I don't know what is the role of the Bar Council to pass such a resolution. <laughs> I think. So you must also educate your uh, Bar Council members, their role when such complaints are coming, because they are inquiring into the act of a lawyer. Suppose it is a misrepresentation, the misconduct on the part of the a lawyer before the court when he is making a representation or the contact. Can it be possible for the, uh, the council, which is expected to take action against that person to pass a resolution that the, the, the officer will not be proceeded against? I do not know. I am, I am yet to come across such thing. <laughs> Judicial yes. officer's protection is only for bona fide action. Bona <laughs> fide. <laughs> no, 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 not that I am not at that whether the judicial <laughs> officer or site or not on that. 
the question is how far the bar council can exercise the statutory duty of passing a resolution where the lawyer there is an allegation against the lawyer also that he has misrepresented the, the misconduct in himself in the court so these are all the areas where we have to understand our responsibilities and the responsibility of protecting the institution as such whether it is a lawyer community or the judicial institution because your existence is only because in the existence of the judicial judicial institution if there is no courts what is the value of a lawyer nothing so it is for you to think there is no court there is no lawyer there is no place to practice for you so it so is it is high time for us to understand our limitations between the uh, between uh, between the bench and the bar relationship also for these purposes so it is a very interesting area where we will have to do lot of research and also it is a area where lot of education is also required from the law, co law college itself because the law colleges also must provide a a a, a subject on advocates act and what is the role of a lawyer and what is the etiquettes and the uh, the ethics that he has to follow as a lawyer what is his duties and responsibilities more than saying that your right to practice is always there because that is always provided in the statute but how to how to become a good lawyer is one of the thing that can be curriculum will have to provide gas in the school we are getting the molding the character that is what the school expected to say just like the, the law, law college curriculum also must take the interest of molding the lawyers of such a nature who are capable of protecting the nobility of the profession thank you very much thank you justice ramachand sir i think uh, sri ram sir wanted to add something uh, no uh, i was just wondering good that justice ram krishnan is not on the rolls of any state bar council at the time he is not because i have <laughs> i have seen the i have seen the uh, bar council of india rules being amended now uh that uh, any any questioning of uh, the functioning of the bar council member by any member uh, enrolled mm -hmm. might invite disciplinary action <laughs> and uh, there is a near uh, uh, irremovability of office uh, for the members of the bar council i know there is one red petition filed by a kerala based lawyer challenging these bar council of india amendment rules also so uh, irremo irremovability is no longer uh, the privilege of the judges alone the bar council members can't also ever be removed i have seen how difficult the rules are but anyway that was on a light away so uh, may, may i add a word to what justice ramachand sir said sir uh, we did not uh, take any resolution uh, asking for uh, taking action against a uh, judicial officer there were two instances wherein it has come to the notice uh, as you as uh, sir ramachand sir knows the bar council object of the bar council also includes welfare of the lawyers and also promoting advocates associations and all these are part of the functions so it has come to the notice continuously it has come to our notice that certain judicial officers in certain centers official centers are, are misbehaving not against one lawyer against even the senior lawyers many are not appearing before them and one instance it came to a very conflict situation in tuantrum regarding one law officer one judicial yeah. officer yeah. and during that uh, tense situation uh, we have taken we have passed a resolution stating that these are the incidents when they should be looked into we never said the action should be taken into these are what we have it has come to our notice not only here but also in certain other areas a permanent solution should be made for this because this are part of the <coughs> bar at uh, are two sides of one coin so it has to be done are the two chariots of the wheel so we have to have a balance for this a platform has to be created so they need education because right now we find lot of judicial officers who assume power at the age of 22 23 and they should be uh, uh, made to understand just like lawyers should be given education ethical part and they are also coming with the same law schools where uh, the lawyers also are not having and ethics part is not there in the test for judicial officers also no there is no oh. curriculum there is no there curriculum, is no curriculum. <laughs> <Yes>. everybody <laughs> is happy judicial officers are happy lawyers are happy no curriculum <laughs> and and as uh, sir uh, siram sir sir now that has been put on hold bar council rules now the kerala bar council has passed a resolution against that a member from here 
Vakaus of uh, India member from Kerala has uh, openly descended to that. And the rules have been put on hold. And there is also a red petition filed. Uh, the red petitions no, no. are also pending, but but they have not. They have decided not to implement it, and the amendment has been put on hold. Because, yeah, no, no. Uh, I am only. And unfair for that. I am only. I am only indicating that. Uh, uh, advocates have not been able to resist the temptation of being the Henry the Seventh or the Eighth or the Ninth. We don't know what's the count now. So <laughs> yes, it was yes. only in that light of being. I am also ex officio okay. because we don't. Uh, all the members don't uh, ascribe to that view and uh, don't <laughs> agree to those. Correct. Thank you. Thank you, Nagraj sir. And uh, uh, Mr. sir. May yeah. Once the always said. I entered this platform very late. So I did not have the privilege of hearing Justice Hari Kumar and his earlier comments. Anyway, I'll have the advantage of going through his uh, video clipping, probably if uh, Sham provides. Uh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Then alone, I, I'll be in a position to make any comment. Okay. But at the same time, I want to remind yes, you myself you as well as all of you that it is for the bar council of the state. Everybody is talking to Crosstalk is there. Yes. Both yes. yes. of the states should take some lead to help the advocate community. I think they are not doing their bit to the expected to the expected levels. They must do their job properly. Then alone, probably there will be some sort of uh, what do you call it, regulating the system. System in the sense, I include both judges as well as advocates. I don't exclude judges because Bar Council has got a right to correct the judges also. That's what my strong belief. I said Bar Association must bring to the notice of the concerned judges who are always here and always here on wrong side, not on right side, mind you. See, we, we, I did come across instances where judges required such, certain sort of uh, what she said, counseling. I don't say lessons, but counseling to mend themselves, okay? Both, their, both in respect of their judicial attitude as well as their behavior outside the court. That's exactly the requirement, present day requirement. Bar Council cannot keep off from this responsibility. I really congratulate Justice Hari Kumar for coming out with such open comments. No, it's a time, sir, when we go for an introspection. We can't just sit, sit quiet. We can't just sit quiet. Something must be done for sake of at least uh, protecting the institution. Institution as a whole, that is, judiciary as an institution as a whole. Not the, you see, not only the part, that part of uh, this institution that is advocacy. Judiciary must be corrected by this professional body and it should correct itself as well as the members of this body. Thank you very much, Sham. Very kind of you. Thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, I'll, uh, yeah, Harikumar, sir, please. See, as Nagarajan pointed out, there is one thing that is at the age of 22, 23, people are getting selected as municipals into the judiciary. And who is exactly responsible is See, the process was by an observation of the Supreme Court that persons without experience can also be appointed without that's any, that's without any legislation. Then the process started like that. Nobody ever challenged because had it been put to challenge, it would not have been agreed also. Then thereafter, the laws were amended to suit this process. So I was once once arguing a case, an honorable judge of the high, high court said, Mr. Harikumar, he made a query, Mr. Harikumar, how can you justify the learned Munsip? I said, it's not my job to justify the learned Munsip. And I may say that what she has done is legally incorrect. But while answering this question, I may say that this court is essentially responsible for it. Because it is you who did the selection process. So to kick it out, the Honorable Judge said, no, 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 it is by the Apex Court. Then I said, Apex Court only said 
that persons without experience can be appointed. Apex Court did not say persons without experience alone be appointed. Here, earlier it was for five years for being appointed as a Munsif. Now nothing is required. This time also, <coughs> Ram Kumar sir knows very well because he, he is attending the academy as a faculty. That this time, the selectees, I think most of them, for the last so many selections, most of them have not even two years of practice. And uh, what essentially happens is they don't know what exactly things are in the practical manner. At least the physiognomy. <laughs> Sir, just I, I share one experience, my experience in Andhra Pradesh. When I was principal district judge of one of the oh, one of the districts in Andhra Pradesh, a boy was see he came to hold the post of a district municipal junior civil judge, present a junior civil judge. When I asked him what was his experience in bar, he said, "No, sir, I am fresh from college." I just asked him, did you ever visit a court? He said, no, I did not visit a court. Do you know at least there will be a chamber for a judge or judicial officer? He said, I do not know. Then how did you get your, see your ropes? He said, my brother-in-law is practicing in, a, in a another place. He has helped me, taking me to Hyderabad and got me stitched. See, till he entered the court premises, he had not, an, he did not have an occasion to visit the court or know about what is happening in a court. And then I simply asked him, at least do you, do you know what exactly your duty? See, there was, thereafter, after this gentleman became a master in one of the courts, there was a of, uh, there was a of transfer applications in my court for transfer of many criminal matters. Stating, the like, simple allegation is that See, he is outsourcing all the orders. Outsourcing all the practical outsourcing all the orders. And his brother-in-law is dictating the orders. The young boy of 22 years, bright future. As a district judge, see, I, I, will, I, I would never think of spoiling his career. So what was the goal? What was left to me then? Then I had to call my administrative judge and had to tell him, sir, this is the situation in this court. Then he said, better you counsel him, don't spoil his career, don't write to high court. Now one day I called that boy and also his brother-in-law. I didn't leave his brother-in-law, I asked his brother-in-law to come. Both of them came to me. For a cup of tea, I told his brother-in-law to mind his business. Otherwise, I'll be sending a complaint against you to bar counsel. Later on, of course, I came to know he was transferred from that place to another station. And probably this experience had made him to learn. And I think he is stepping out to be a good officer now. And one more instance I'll tell you about recruitment process. When I was in division bench in API High Court, a matter before came before us, questioning the notification issued by State of Andhra, the High Court of Andhra Pradesh for recruitment of junior civil judges. Then I, I told you, I narrated the same incident to the advocate who was then appearing for the party, that is Ritpishner. Mr. You want me, you want us to go for recruitment of this type of people. Then where do you stand? Well, suppose you happen to appear in a court where a boy of 22 years or 23 years old, sitting as a magistrate or a junior civil judge and conducting proceedings. And if he's not in a position to know what exactly CPC says, what exactly CRPC says, then what is it you are going to do? No, no, sir, let me please allow me to argue. I said then, I and my colleague who was on the bench, who was sharing bench with me, told him, no, no, we are for prescribing at least three years minimum service, as was the practice earlier. What happened, you know? Next day, the roster was changed. Next day, the roster was changed from. We, we did not have an opportunity of going, going on with the matter. And the matter came before the then Chief Justice. See, these are all the practical things that are happening. 
That's why I always say that Bar Council has got enormous responsibility of taking care of the institution as such, not only at the profession of advocates, but also the judiciary. It cannot just ignore or just bypass its responsibilities. It is now, nowadays, in present day circumstances, Bar Council has got enormous responsibility. That is my, my really, my opinion. So these are all things, you see, which we have experienced. And probably even in state of Kerala, state of Kerala may not stand differently. One probably thing is, many, sir. Many of the advocates, probably they may not like to come out for obvious reasons. And I can just visualize the experience they face in such courts. Hmm? Sir, uh, Judicial Academy should give more training on psychology, behavior, management, and how to uh, deal with lawyers. Now, all these components are lacking in the Judicial Academy. No, no, that is being given. That is being given. It is not that uh, they, are giving, they are giving it. They are giving it. No, not no, this is part of curriculum, curriculum of every Judicial Academy because the curriculum usually will be prescribed by National Judicial Academy for all state Judicial Academy. Focus is not there so much on... No, no. Uh, behavior. The curriculum will be finally fixed by National Judicial Academy every year yes. by June, first week of June, June or uh, last week of June or first week of July. And state academies usually <coughs> with their own inputs, so adding their own inputs. So this is actually what you said. It's a part of uh, the curriculum in judicial academies. No, in, in a la I, I, I think that uh, lastly, when they are uh, before being uh, completing the uh, training. In one session is on court management and court mannerism. That is what I understand. And, and, and dealing with lawyers, how to behave with lawyers. Oh, that's, a, that's a court mannerism. Yeah. Everything that includes court that's mannerism. That's it's only a small part, sir. It should be given more stress. That's I'm only yes. saying maybe, that. maybe you're right. <laughs> we'll have only two, three, two or three classes for this subject allotted in judicial academy. More lawyers should be brought in to we, we don't, we, we don't share find experience. It so important. We don't find it so important in judicial academy. <laughs> Sir, the difficulty it appears is that the adversarial system of adjudication appears to be taught in such a manner that advocates are your adversary. They stand in the way of disposal of cases. <laughs> they take time and I don't know. I mean, very hostile attitude we get in courts nowadays, especially in the law. No, that, that is that is an experience in every state. Probably even Kerala. Kerala is not an exception. Otherwise, it's not. Very, very, it is there. Very, very, every, every tribe, even uh, tribunal cities. That is there. Yes, it's going on. It's going on. And what what is the, what is the said about registry? I think it's equally true in Andhra Pradesh. Uh, this is my experience. I try to correct by, by means of judicial orders. Ultimately, my orders were challenged before Chief Justice and Chief Justice had to inter He had struck down my orders when I tried to help the bar. Unfortunately, the bar, bar council did. See, bar association, High Court bar association did not at least question the order of the Chief Justice by at least by seeking a review, particularly during the pandemic. Particularly during my when matters were not getting listed, when I passed certain orders, in repetitions, they were challenged before Chief Justice in writ appeals, and writ appeals were maintained, entertained, and directions were issued to the as if not to mind these directions. See, that's how things are going on in every high court, and in, and I don't think local courts will stand on a better footing. I think more discussions and deliberations on these topics would uh, invariably. Um, uh, I mean, the think tanks will start thinking something may happen, and uh, hopefully, sir, everything will move forward. No, no. The only thing is, we must uh, see some positive step. That's why I say Bar Council has got enormous responsibility in correcting situation. Now, when, 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 see, when, uh, just Ramkrishnan said a complaint was made by Bar Council against certain judicial officers, I rightly felt very happy. No, they will have to say, no, question is, they can, really they, happy they, can, they, can for, they can forward it to the chief. No, no, after all, all the bar council being representative body of the advocate, if not bar council, who should uh, see, who should do this? Who should, who, see, somebody must take up the cause, isn't so? I think that would be the take-home message for Nagaraj Naran because he's the, I mean, at least for us, the whole representative so we have, of Bar Council. We have, we have been trying a lot. If, uh, no, if not in, 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 in harsh tone, at least in a subtle manner, they can bring it in the notice of the 
See, at least the administrative committee of the High Court. That they can, they can forward the complaint. We have they been, we can, have they been can make a request. Please see that they are corrected. Let's we have, we have been pursuing, for, for we have been pursuing with the administrative committee and chief justice. No, no, since 2020 no, no. for uh, my my my, says, <laughs> my take on this has not been fruitful so far. No, no, you better. No, no, no. in certain cases actions are being taken. No, yes, that that they are at least they are they, no, they are they are shifted from yes. one one post to the other post at least. That is happening. No, no, they are the officers. If it is ultimately get, found get that to learn, the allegations must, are get to learn what exactly the defect is, and there must be yes. see they must be given an opportunity to correct yes, them. Correct. That should. So be what we will do is that. Uh, in the next session uh, with Harikumar, sir, uh, whichever date is convenient to you, sir, we will be contacting so that we can complete this session. Now that we are running around, uh, uh, time is uh, around 7.35. And, and uh, uh, the, the kind of uh, 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 the subject with which we are dealing, uh, the discussions, deliberations, we lost sight of uh, the time. So may I request Prem to wind up the session. Prem, over to you. Well, uh, that was, uh, indeed, it was a scholarly articulation of the topic. And Hariyaman, as I call him, he is a lawyer who has never compromised on the professional ethics and standards. And I am only reminded of the famous quote of the Scottish-born, Irish-American political journalist and writer, Alexander Clark Cogburn, that the weapon of the advocate is the sword of a soldier and not the dagger of the assassin. And we have seen judgments from Lord Atkins, uh, Saurendranath Mitra, which dates back to 30 Privy Council on which we are having multitudes of judgments one after the other, each basing something on the nobility of the legal system. And kindly see, ours as we know, it is not like any other traditional profession. Ours is not a commercial one in nature. It's an extremely noble one, considering the fact that we are doing this profession for the social good. And there is a beautiful ruling by Justice Arun Mishra, which is reported in 2019-16 SCC 407, which is a must-read judgment for all the lawyers. Now, where well, Justice Mishra, he had given a very, very detailed explanation regarding each and every conduct of a lawyer. And he goes on to say, there is no room for arrogance, not only for a lawyer, but also for a judge. And then comes to the naked truth. See, a judgment rendered by a judge based upon the dint of the hard work and quality of the arguments that are advanced before that particular judge by a lawyer. Still, we say brilliant judgment by Justice Swanson. Right. And today, to be very honest, as Adrian has put it, we are seeing lawyers who are trying to confuse the judges with uh, inapplicable precedents, making all sorts of uh, false and frivolous pleadings twisting the facts to suit their own convenience by all unfair and sinister methods. And they never ever do respect the client's autonomy to take or to make the decisions. Instead of following your client instructions, the lawyers, they are substituting their own notions for that of the client. So to be very brief, that the lawyers nowadays, major chunk of lawyers, I mean, not all the lawyers, they do transgress the authority which is conferred upon that particular lawyer by the client, unmindful of our onerous responsibility. And all these would tend to be ineffective assistance of the counsel instead of effective assistance. And as Nagaraj has put it, whenever the bar council asks them for a, an explanation, they do justify it. And sometimes there are lawyers who have uh, justified that this is a struggle for the survival and that is why they do this. So, as Nagaraj has already read out the preamble also, the chapter 2. Now, this preamble, that makes it imperative that an advocate has to conduct himself and his duties in a, an extremely responsible manner. Kindly see, the constitution mentioned the Supreme Court right during 1954, speaking to Justice Vivian Bose, that is a matter pertaining to one Mr. G, a senior advocate. It's reported in AR 1954 Supreme Court at page 557. He also uses a sentence to use the language of the army, an advocate of this court, that's the Supreme Court, was a senior advocate. He's expected all times to comport himself in a manner 
befitting his status and as an officer of the court as well as a gentleman so we must bear in mind that what may be appropriate or what may be lawful for some other person who is not a professional or who is not a member of the bar so in the non professional capacity it may be improper for an advocate in his professional capacity so i would stop by saying let not our ethical standards be compromised at any cost thank you so much thank you prem and as we come to the end of the 274th session let me thank the speaker of the day hariyatan harimar sir uh, it was a wonderful experience to say the least and uh, uh advocate general of andhra pradesh shriram sir for the introductory remarks and uh, representing the bar council i say nagraj navan sir for the wonderful uh, concluding remarks and this is ram kumar sir this is ramana sir this is ramushan sir this is pais kurier ko sir and all of you wonderful participants who were here and share the and today we did not go for the question and answer or, uh, or or discussion session because anyway we have another session coming in and we didn't uh, uh, and also the time we are uh, crossing past now it's 7:40 so thank you so it's just like saying good evening now good night so <laughs> till we meet again next time please do take care and stay safe thank you thank you good night good night, good night.